Mikey. What's up Trips, it's me the Tactical Brit and today we're going to be looking at something that I feel is relatively important. Now in the media storm that is Battlefield 1 and the retrospective hype train that follows, it's very easy to forget some of the things in the game that have actually changed. We're being bombarded recently with a lot of information and as a result of that it can be pretty confusing to see all of the actual details and finer things in Battlefield that have improved and certainly in comparison to its predecessors are making a massive positive difference on Battlefield 1 as a title. Now today I thought I'd go through my top list of the personal changes that I've seen in Battlefield 1 that I feel as though have contributed to the game in a very positive direction. We're going to be looking at everything from vehicles to lighting to just the general game itself and the things here and there that are going to shape the experience for you guys when you finally get hands on with this game either in the beta later this year or in the actual release in October. So let's jump straight on into this. Now there's no particular order to this list but one of my first favoured changes to Battlefield 1 as a whole is progressive vehicle damage. Now in previous Battlefield titles when you damaged a vehicle, the vehicle itself had its own certain level of health and it would just blow up eventually once it hit a certain number. It also had a certain level of incapacity once it hit maybe sort of 25%, it would slow down, catch fire, things like that, but it was nothing particularly impressive. Now this has changed quite a lot in Battlefield 1 with a progressive damage vehicle system. In Battlefield 1, when you attack certain vehicles, they will actually lose life at a rate which directly affects how the vehicle will handle or how it will perform as a whole. So for example, the light tank in Battlefield 1, if a grenade or some kind of rocket is lobbed at it, will actually damage some of its tracks if it hits the bottom half of the vehicle. As a result, the vehicle itself will not be able to move until it has been repaired. The same applies to air vehicles as well, well, where if the wings have been damaged or the rudders to a certain degree, it's actually impossible to turn them in a certain fashion. And this progressive vehicle damage system is contributing quite massively to the game in the sense that for once your directed shots will actually have meaning as opposed to maybe some areas proposing more damage than other areas. If you aim for the tracks, you will likely take out the ability to move. If you aim for the back engine, you will also likely take out the ability to move. And I also believe in future it's going to be plausible to actually take out gun turrets themselves to stop the vehicle firing until it's actually been repaired, which is a very impressive feat for Battlefield 1 to have. This extends quite dramatically as well. If you shoot at certain parts of the behemoth or the aerial bomber that comes in to support the losing team, it will actually drop carriages onto the map. These carriages originally had gunner positions in them, so if you cause enough damage to those individual carriages, they will actually fall down and be rendered useless. So make sure you're pointing your targets to the correct places and trying to maximize your damage performance in one particular area. The next big change is the dynamic spawn screen. Now in previous iterations of Battlefield, the only rough indication of your spawn that you would get are the symbols that were stagnant and preset out on the map. So you would only have the objectives to choose from, your squad mates, and maybe you'd get a rough understanding of the enemy location based on the odd red blip from when they had been spotted. This has changed drastically in Battlefield 1. We now have a full top-down functioning view of the map as a whole, so you can see where the vehicles are moving, what buildings are being blown up, and the net flow of players in between certain objectives. And as a result, it gives you a much more tactical decision when choosing your spawn points. You may choose to spawn at an objective which has a very limited net flow of players and is likely to be susceptible to attack, or you may choose to jump right in in the group of players who are heading towards an objective and know where your enemy is. It also adds a certain sense of feeling to the game that everything's interconnected and very seamless which is what they've been aiming to achieve and overall it constitutes to a very positive improvement to the game as a whole. The next big change is how you enter and exit vehicles. In previous iterations of Battlefield, holding a square or the enter vehicle button or X or whatever it may happen to be simply made you randomly vanish into said vehicle and get into a certain position. 
This has changed entirely in Battlefield 1. Now in Battlefield 1, when you get into a vehicle or exit a vehicle, there will be animations to do so. During these animations, you are also susceptible to be attacked by enemies, so if you are entering a tank under heavy fire, it's likely that you'll get killed before you have the opportunity to even get into it. The same also applies to certain aerial vehicles when switching seats. Now switching seats in Battlefield 1 also looks very impressive because you will actually move from one gunner position across the actual plane itself into the next gunner position. And in these positions and transition movements, you will also be available to be killed as well as taking potential damage. So make sure you keep an eye out when you're getting into vehicles in future. Next up, alongside the ability of vehicles to be damaged progressively, we also have a big shift in terms of destruction, and this is a massive feature change from previous Battlefield titles. Destruction pretty much applies to everything in the map now. There are very few things that can't be destroyed, and if you can see it, you can probably blow it up or take it down in some way. Walls are completely destructible, the floor itself, if explosions take damage to it, will actually demorph and change into different positions, and you can actually create really large craters from this but most importantly is that this destruction is all progressive it's very much like the vehicles in the sense that when you hit a certain area that certain area will be destroyed now in previous battlefield titles firing at a building would cause some kind of preset explosive animation that would take that side of the building down this is changed very much in battlefield one where the vehicles and buildings themselves are a bit more dynamic and certain explosions will collapse certain parts of of buildings. Aiming at particular parts of the roof or particular sides of the buildings can cause them to cave in and collapse, and big explosions from above from bombers can actually cause the entire tops of buildings to come off entirely. This also makes certain locations within said buildings inaccessible. If you blow up a staircase within that building, the top floor will no longer be able to be accessed by people from the stairs, thus creating a new challenge for infantry in that location. Things as well, such as trees and all the minor things, I guess, that you kind of would expect to be destructible to the fullest extent, now are in Battlefield 1, and it's a big improvement on previous iterations. Next, we have the different variants of the same weapon. This is a big change from previous Battlefield titles because it's something that hasn't been seen before. Now, each weapon that you have in the game will have a certain kind of variant that will actually change the gun to fit different scenarios. There are variants that will improve the weapon in terms of range, variants that will improve the weapon in terms of close quarters capabilities, and variants that will improve the weapon in terms of the kind of sights it has, the attachments it possesses, and whether or not perhaps it can equip a bipod. You can use an LMG, for example, as a light infantryman, which will actually prepare you for close-up situations, or as a soldier who hangs back a bit more with a bipod, and thus changing your entire playstyle. This is a big change from previous titles, where things tend to be pretty much bog standard, here's your gun, here's your attachments, get on with it, and considering attachments are in the less of order in Battlefield 1, considering they're probably will be less of them, the variant system does make a lot of sense and is overall I'd say an improvement to the game. Finally, we have a change which seems very minimal but makes such a huge difference to Battlefield as a whole and that is of course dynamic weather. We have daylight, we have rain, and we have fog at this point in time, and this likely will extend to lots of other formats of weather, and it just improves the title at a massive scale. The same map that we're playing on right now, St. Quentin's Scar, currently appears in rainy conditions, cloudy, sunny, and foggy conditions, and this is very beneficial to the game because one map suddenly becomes four different playstyles of map. Sunny conditions will allow you to snipe from range, foggy conditions will force close quarter situations, and rainy conditions will force long-range mistakes as well. And it also makes things such as flying planes and riding through vehicles a challenge themselves too. If it's very possible that when you're flying a plane, you won't be able to catch out the corner of your eye a potential passing plane due to the fact that it's too foggy or too rainy for you to see. It's such a minor change to the game, and it's something that I think a lot of fans have been waiting for, and overall a massive improvement to Battlefield 1 and the Battlefield franchise as a whole. So guys, that's it for today's video on the top changes. There are plenty more, including the new UI, lots of different updates here and there, but these are just some of the ones I feel are the most prominent and noticeable as you enter the game, and things that you will get the most out of. And I'm sure this list is going to be pretty extensive in the future as we head towards final launch. Let me know what you think down below, and of course, if you have the alpha, let me know what your top feature is. As always, fellas, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon in another video.